Hi everybody, this is Barry Schwartz from uh, the Search and the Roundtable. Um, this is the past news, uh, the news we covered over the past week at the Search and the Roundtable at sroundtable.com. Today is Friday, September 25th. Um, thanks for tuning in, and we'll get started right away. The big Yahoo news this week was that they launched um, a new search interface, a new UI for their uh, search engine. Um, plus, they launched this whole new brand campaign, which is under the slogan, the internet is under new management, dot, 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 yours. So basically, they're trying to say that they are the portal for you to manage anything on the internet at their website. Um, so obviously that goes along with their new homepage and stuff like that, which allows you to customize the homepage and features of the homepage to put whatever you want in there, uh, which is nice. Uh, but the new search, we'll talk about the search interface. The new search interface has more intelligent search results. It has feature-rich experience. Um, it has search assistant expansion. It has an improved total page load time, improved perceived load time and more inline data. If you go ahead and go to search.yahoo.com, do some searches, you'll see on the left-hand side, um, there's more uh, refinements on the side, there's more, I guess, widgets and stuff they could add in there. There's more ways to filter results dynamically, um, and there's um, more ways to customize the actual search results. It's pretty neat the way it's done. Um, so if you want to take a look at that, you can. We have our notes about it on September 23rd at seroundtable.com. Google has been testing this week, for the first time we saw a new keyword beta tool, a new beta keyword tool. It's going to replace their existing keyword tool, um, and it's showing up in the AdWords uh, accounts of many users. All you got to do is go to, if you're on the new AdWords interface, click on Opportunities. On the left-hand side, there's a keyword tool link, and then in that tool, it actually shows the old tool, but there's a link to the new beta tool. Um, it has a lot of new features, a lot of uh, things to let you to actually click down to the refinements, so you can actually enter a keyword or a website. It will then give you suggestions based on other filters such as all countries, specific countries, specific cities, languages. Um, you can even uh, look at the mobile searches versus non-mobile. You can see traffic estimations, estimates based on maximum CPC or daily budgets. You can filter keywords by negative keywords and stuff like that. And then you have the left-hand side refinements which allows you to actually show um, campaign metrics, um, Google Insight data. It's basically them really putting all their keyword tools and all their different tools from Google Insights to search and different things like that into one tool, which is pretty neat. Um, you should definitely want to take out these, check out these uh, different screen, screenshots we have on seroundtable.com um, on September 24th. We have a link to it. Um, plus, if you see it, you can definitely play with it yourself. I believe there will be an AdWords blog post about it today sometime. On September 23rd, we reported that many AdWords advertisers are reporting that they're getting an error or a warning from Google about um, them having a low share of voice, which is translated into basically your ads are appearing, uh, I guess, less often than the total impressions available in your market. So they're basically telling you, hey, um, your ads gonna show up more. You definitely want to maybe increase your budget or something to improve your ad quality in order to show your ad more often. Um, this hit a lot of advertisers on the 23rd of or 22nd of September. Um, and there's a thread about it, a pretty long thread about it at the Google AdWords Help Forum, plus another webmaster at other forums as well. I believe there's a new one over at Webmaster World as well. So if you have hit, been hit by this, you can take a look at it. We have a post about it on September 23rd. Um, there's a blog post on the AdSense blog, um, basically confirming what we noticed earlier this month that AdWords, I'm sorry, that Google AdSense has been testing various different formats for the new arrows. So now they've finally confirmed that they set a finalized uh, format for the new arrows. And we have before and after screenshots on seroundtable.com um, today as September 25th. So if you want to see the before and after screenshots of the arrows that they use to flip between ads using Google AdSense, you can definitely take a look at that. Since we're on the topic of AdSense, um, earlier this week we reported that a lot of AdSense publishers are having problems logging into their account. Um, some believe that it has to do with um, basically their accounts being manually reviewed and when they have the manual review for some reason after the manual review even though they are approved to go forward they have some bug where they can't actually get back into the account. Um, Google um, Jennifer has confirmed this as a known issue and they're still working out um, trying to figure it out uh, why these specific publishers who have been, been manually reviewed um, are not able to get into the account. Some people say that clearing your cookies get you back in there um, but others say it doesn't work. Um, if you have this issue, there are links for more information on September 21st at seroundtable.com. So if you're brand new to SEO, um, one of the biggest myths out there is that the keywords meta tag is a tag that you should be using in order to rank well in Google. Um, 
most SEOs who've been around, you know, even for a few weeks, learned that quickly. Um, it is has Google pretty much ignores that tag, and Google has finally confirmed it in a blog post at Google Webmaster Central, um, but also a video from Matt Cotts on that topic. Um, I think Google has never denied it. Um, Google has actually said it in the, in the various forums in the past. Um, but basically, what's happening is people have been suing over the fact that people are using trademarks and key, keyword meta tags. Um, and this is basically Google's way of saying you can't sue over it, it doesn't really make an impact. Um, the meta description does have some type of impact, but overall, um, overall, you should know that Google does, totally ignores the meta keyword tag. It doesn't mean that Yahoo or Bing do, do, do that, but Google does. Uh, Google also ignores other meta tags, including the uh, revisit after meta tag, and there are uh, there is actually a whole page describing which meta tags Google looks at and uses and which ones um, pretty much they don't. So if you want more information about that, September 22nd at seroundtable.com. Over the course of the past uh, few weeks or so, I've been getting lots of uh, questions about why is Google showing uh, site links in a different type of format. So basically what Google is showing is um, deeper site links, I'm calling them deep site links, with actually data next to them. So let me try to zoom you in here and see if I can uh, actually show you how this looks. Uh, it's getting closer, 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 closer. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. Uh, so basically you have your listing there. Zoom out a little bit, maybe it's easier to see. You have your listing up here. And then over here you have the more, the sublinks, the site links, which are long title based site links. And then on the left of the site link, you have data, like the, the date, or sometimes the number of posts in the forum thread. So basically, this is a deeper look at how uh, Google is uh, looking at the various uh, pages. And if you, for example, you do a search for Google Site Links forums um, in Google, it actually shows you two examples on the front page of just how Google handles those site links. Uh, it's pretty neat. I like the way it does it, because if you have several blog posts or several forum threads about the same that match on the same keyword phrase, it's Google's way of basically showing, hey, there's more, more topics that are discussing this specifically at this, at, at this site, and you may want to take a look at it. And the beauty of it is it actually shows dates and other number of, form, number of posts would actually give users a better idea of what to click through on. Um, it shows they actually know about this information, and that's maybe why they're ranking the number one result as a number one result. Pretty interesting to look at, and if you want more information about that, we have a blog post about that, I think, yesterday, September 24th. So mid this week, Google launched what they're calling um, Google Side Wiki. It's basically an extension to Google to the Google Toolbar, which allows you to surf the web and then comment on any site. For example, you comment on SE Roundtable um, exactly on the site, but you have to have the Google Toolbar installed. But basically what it does is, if you have the Google Toolbar installed and you comment on that site using the Google Toolbar, Google Side Wiki feature, it then shows up when other people who have the Google Toolbar are going on that site. So basically, you writing on that site, on that site, um, which is pretty cool, but yet it's pretty uh, scary on some senses, but you have to have the Google Toolbar installed to have it. Um, so some people are asking, is there a way to opt out? Um, could Webmaster say, I don't want to allow this feature for my website? The answer is currently no, but there are ways to actually block people who are using the Google Toolbar from actually getting to your site. There's a rewrite condition. We posted about that on September 25th at seroundtable.com, which has links to the previous post as well. Um, there's a lot of discussion, a lot of debate, a lot of conflict over this tool. Um, some people like it, some people hate it. Google also officially launched a Google Maps product called, uh, not product, but basically an ex uh, a change on how they handle it is what they're calling place pages. Place pages is nothing really new. It's basically, you know, when you go to Google Maps, you type in a business name, and up comes um, a listing, and then you can click the more info link on that listing. That more info link used to pop open a bubble on top of the map with more detail, a large bubble. Instead of Google actually pop popping up a large bubble, now what they're doing is they're actually popping up uh, or opening up a brand new page. So now that place has a page, i.e. place pages. Um, well, basically, this is basically creating a, a page for every single place in the Google Maps directory. Um, and each of those pages have a nice clean URL that you can link to or embed on your website. Um, some people are calling this at Webmaster World, they're calling this uh, basically the same thing as Wikipedia, but with Google AdSense on it, with ads on it. So uh, the question is, what do you think? Do you like it? Do you dislike it? Do you think it's just another way for Google to make money? Uh, or do you think try, Google's trying to be happy, uh, trying to make the web a better place? Um, here's another news flash for you. Um, 
Google has confirmed that typically referrer spam um, does not hurt your Google rankings. Basically what referrer spam is, is in the old days people left their referrer logs open uh, for anybody to take a look at. And what spammers did was they basically hit that referrer log with, with fake referrers, which created links to their web pages because it injected links into the referrer log. Um, this is the old school way of spamming to get links and that was an issue years and years ago. Um, but honestly, um, it seems like Google can handle most cases of this. It's not a major issue. Most web servers don't even allow this anymore. Um, John over at Google Webmaster Central has confirmed that any site pretty much who thinks that they're impacted by this and their Google rankings are impacted this by this is typically not referrer spam that's causing any problems. So if you do have problems, don't blame it on the referrer spam. Um, because you said generally this cannot hurt your website and uh, typically it's something else that is hurting your website. We caused a bit of a stir uh, in the WebS community by reporting on a thread, uh, which basically we quoted John over at Google Webmaster uh, team as saying that you should not link to, to affiliate URLs without using the nofollow. Basically, some guy came into the forum saying, um, why is my site not ranking well? John said, um, there's two reasons. One is you're linking to people without the nofollow tag and it just looks like an affiliate site. You should basically, then John said basically you should wrap all those affiliate, affiliate links in no follows. Um, so we went through this and the question is why should you have to link, especially if a site's not just an affiliate site but it just has some affiliate links, why do you have to worry about not wrapping those in the no follow tag? Um, so there's a lot of comments and discussion about that. Is, Google, is John saying you have to wrap no follow, um, no affiliate links in no follow tags? Is this a miscommunication? Um, is affiliate link called a pay link? If so, does Google not like those? Um, there's a whole lot of discussion about pay links and stuff like that, as you can imagine. I'm not going to get into it on the video because I could talk about it for hours, but if you want more information, September 24th at seroundtable.com. On the Bing ad front, the search ad front, ad center, um, there was some news from Media Report, uh, Media Post, that my, um, Bing is going to actually start testing um, fave icons, favorite icons in the ads, in the actual search ads themselves. Um, Yahoo and Google has been testing this for a while. Um, I think Google dropped them. I think Yahoo still has some examples of them live. Uh, but Matt Cutts told me from Google that Alta Vista did this back in the way back in the old days. Um, and I have a picture of the old ads, of the old uh, fave icons and icons in the search ads from um, Alta Vista's days. So it's pretty neat to see. We have a post about this on September 22nd. Again, I haven't seen them yet. Bing is supposedly going to add fave icons to some search ads. If you do see them, let me know. Um, so you've been noticing those flying saucer, mysterious Google logos, the Google Doodles from Google over the past few weeks. Um, the mystery has been solved. First we saw this logo um, with a, basically a flying source, uh, flying source over the O of Google. And when you clicked on it, it was basically, you know, all your O's belong to us. Then the week, uh, week or so, 10 days later, we saw a uh, logo which led to crop circles, which was basically taking another, uh, to basically um, was missing an L um, and the bottom line is um, a few days later we had a logo which basically uh, was honoring H.G. Wells, the pretty much the father of science fiction um, and it was basically around the uh, 1898 classic The War of the Worlds which Google pretty much honored um, on his birthday which was on September 23rd, 21st, September 21st. So that's what the whole mystery about these logos it was basically three logos to honor one person three logos to honor one person, and that was the first time we've ever seen anything like that from Google. Um, a week from this Monday, XMX East is coming to New York, the Javits Center. Uh, we will be there, thankfully, and we will be covering it. Hopefully, if you guys will be there, please say hello to me, and we can you know, discuss different uh, topics about Google Doodles or whatever it might be. Um, we will have several live vloggers covering it, including Justin Davey, Marty from Aim Clear, Shira and Avi Walensky from Pro Media Corp, Carrie Morgan from Strike Models, Brian from Bu from you know the Bu blog, and Deborah Mouser from Alliance Link. Um, these are all volunteer bloggers who will be blogging the, the event. We're pretty much covering about 40 or so sessions um, in real time using the cover of live blogs. Some of the sessions will be, have dual coverage: um, people posting pictures, people posting questions, people posting uh, commentary and stuff like that. So it's pretty interactive. You definitely want to take a look at it starting Monday, a week from this Monday, October, I think it's October 5th. Yeah, Monday, October 5th, New York time. And you can actually chat with us while we're typing. 
This way we can get more uh, detailed, uh, interactive discussion with you. And if you have any questions while we're covering the live blog, uh, the live uh, speakers, you could definitely let us know. Again, that's coming up. XMX East 2009 at the Javis Center, October 5th. If you haven't registered and you're thinking about it, definitely go, go to xmxeast.com and do it. Um, and hopefully I'll see you there. Again, thanks to the live bloggers. And um, there will be an XMX charity party there. Um, so go to XMX, I'm sorry, there will be an IM charity party there at XMX. Um, so if you want to participate in that in a good cause, go to imcharityparty.com. imcharityparty.com. And hopefully, guys, I'll see you there. Thank you so much for listening to the Search Buzz video recap. My name again is Barry Schwartz. This is the coverage for the past week at the Search and Roundtable, seroundtable.com. Today is Friday, September 25th. Uh, next week we should have live uh, another uh, video for you. And uh, well, guys, I guess we'll see you guys next week. Everyone have a great uh, weekend. And if you're celebrating Yom Kippur, have an easy and meaningful fast and a meaningful day. Thanks. Bye.